In this video, we will get an introduction to component selections because um, modeling and uh, selections uh, go hand in hand if you want to do anything. And I'm going to jump uh, between nodes and uh, traditional Cinema 4D to show you what the relationship is with uh, the methods you already know. So let me first go and add a primitive, just grab it in here, and a geometry operator there you go so I'm gonna get the geometry output put it here and get this nice and ready set this to a plane again to begin with and three in three and let me set my hidden lines excellent first of all at this moment we have uh, no capability of uh, live selecting anything in the viewport there is a feedback uh, but that uh, sort of works but you will see how it goes but we can't do anything here we have to do everything with numbers, like painting by numbers and all that. That's the fun part of it. So let's begin by adding an inset so we can see how the whole selection thing works. I'm going to drop it in between. And now we have all these insetting by 20 or even 42%. Now, if you want to go and uh, create selections, you need to understand that there are some differences between the types of selections in the sense, not what selections are, but how they are used. So first of all, selections need to be arrays, index arrays, arrays of integers. So the easiest way to create one is to create an array from string. I'll show you how to uh, use other methods as well. So index array from string, and uh, you connect this array to the selection. And you can see now it's empty, so nothing really happens. If I go in the indices and type, for example, uh, zero and just click outside, you will see that polygon zero now, because the inset only works on polygons. Polygon zero is the one that's been identified and we are just going and setting the selection. So the inset is being applied to only that selection. Now let's go and create another inset. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this and add it to the stream. And now you will see that every single polygon, including the new polygons, so if I go here and change this, you will see that everything gets inset again. So I call these incidental, momentary selections. And uh, these kind of selections, you just use them when, just for a moment, you want for this particular tool to apply it on a very particular set of polygons or edges or points, depending what you're doing. Let me create a new scene and show you exactly what I did using our standard modeling tools. So I have this uh, editable polygon uh, three by three. I'm in classic Cinema 4D modeling tools. I'm in the polygon mode and I'm going to select that original polygon. I'm going to press I for extrude inner. I'm going to apply whatever my extrude inner is. Then I'm going to delete all the selections. There's no selection. And I'm going to press I again and click and drag so this is precisely what I did earlier. I just selected one polygon, applied the modeling operation, then I deselected everything without actually having to deselect everything. That is implied. I'm applying the next inset or extrude inner in this case on all the polygons, including the ones that were just generated by the first inset. And this is exactly what this setup does. I'm applying the inset on one polygon, and then I'm going to apply it on no selections, which means all the polygons. So that's it with incidental selections. Now what I could do is connect the same array to the other modeling operation. And what this will do, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like, is the following. When I created the original selection, and the polygon index was zero, what the node system tries to do is that polygon, that created polygon, retain its index number. Let me switch back to the classic interface and show you exactly what I mean. So here's our selected polygon. I'm gonna do an inset or an inner extrude. And you can see that the polygon that was selected is the one that's right there in the middle. So the index of this polygon remains the same. So if I do a second extrude inner, it will be applied on that polygon. So the node system tries to retain as much as possible the indices so that this type of consistency exists. And you will find that uh, this happens for very good reason and it works fantastically as we create more complex setups. Let's go back to nodes. 
Another way to create uh, selections is to build an array. So let's grab the build and uh, let's go and set it to integer. And uh, let's put some numbers here. So one, tab three, tab five, tab nine. So these are the four indices. And let's go and put this array in the selection. Let me just connect this over here so uh, it's not affecting anything. I'm just moving it out of the way. I didn't have to disconnect it. But here you can see that we're getting one, three, five, and nine, but you only see three polygons uh, that have been inset. That's because the actual array starts from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is no nine. So I need to change this to seven if I want to get that middle one. Press enter, and there you go. So we can build an array or use uh, any other method we know that can build arrays and that way we can create procedural selections. So that's uh, just about it for the incidental, the momentary selections which we will feed inside our modeling tools to do something to a subset of all polygons. Now we have another concept uh, which is called the active selection and uh, let me just add a bit more information here. This selection here after it's applied to the inset, does not get carried along. That's why I call them incidental or momentary. This geometry container does not have any information about what happened before. If we want the selections to be embedded in the stream, we need to use uh, another method. The first one is called the active selection. So let's go and find active selection. Let's bring it in. And the active selection, first of all, because it's going to embed a selection within the geometry stream or geometry container, needs to be part of the geometry. Whereas in this case, um, an incidental or a momentary selection uh, doesn't need to do that because it's forgotten after the modeling operation has been applied. So what I'm going to do now is go and add these indices, the same four indices, to the active selection. And you can see that nothing really changed. That's because the active selection transfers this selection into the stream. And now not only the first one, but every consecutive modeling operation is only going to be applied to that selection. So I can go and add another inset. Let me go and do that here. And you can see that the inset has been applied to those four polygons. Maybe instead of an inset, I use an extrude this time. So let's go and get an extrude. So I'm going to grab the extrude, and I'm going to intercept these wires and uh, remove the inset. So you can see now that I'm extruding those four polygons. If I didn't have the active selection, just so that you can see the difference, there was nothing in the stream, and these indices were directly fed into the inset, we would have insetting those four polygons, but then everything else will be extruded. So you see the difference, that this persistent selection stays with the geometry stream. And let me show you how this looks like in traditional Cinema 4D modeling. So let's go and select uh, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Let's uh, do an inner extrude. So I'm pressing I. I'm going to do this. And you can see now that I can just press D for extrude and do that. The active selection is this, is the persistence of a selection. So using the active selection workflow is very similar to the type of modeling you've been doing in the past just by using Cinema 4D's modeling tools. Let's go back to the nodes now. Another type of selection is uh, called a range. So range, the selection range, has a very slight difference. So let me just uh, disconnect everything. I'm just going to remove everything from here, everything down here. So we have a very simplified layout. I'm doing this so you can try and ignore all these. Just ignore them. Ignore them. So the selection range. This seems to be quite funny because we are not going to embed it in the stream. You can see that it has a geometry input but does not have a geometry output. That's because all the selection range needs is to know the information of the geometry at this current point.
What it exports is not a selection that's going to be embedded in the stream. That's the job of the active selection and a couple of other nodes we're going to see. But it does need to know how many and what type of components we have so that it can do a select all. How can I select all if I don't know what these things are and how many there are? So basically, the selection range needs the information of the current geometry, and upon that I can actually export all. So everything now is going to be inset, and there's no much difference than uh, insetting nothing. It does the same thing. Or I can say, actually, polygons, that was my mistake. It didn't make a difference in this case. I can say, don't select all, but select only 0, 2, 3. So now it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, to be accurate. And again, I can continue and inset everything, because again, it hasn't been embedded. Everything gets the inset, all the polygons, the newly created ones, the old ones, and so forth. Or I can even go and feed this here, so now it will only inset the ones that were selected over here. So the selection range needs a geometry input so that it knows what is available to create the select all and all that, but does not export, does not embed anything. So what I could do is say the following thing. Let me disconnect this and this. If I want to embed this particular selection within the geometry stream, I will then append a geometry after this. I will tell the active selection to take these indices. I will feed now the geometry back in here. So now the geometry stream includes this selection range. And now any number of modeling tools I apply after the active selection is only going to be applied to that selection. So let me go back here, geometry, extrude, and so forth. To talk about the last bit of uh, selections, I need to go back to uh, classic Cinema 4D modeling. So let's assume I want to save the selection. We all know what to do in these cases. We go to the select and we say set selection. We add a name and call it selection, press enter. And from this point onwards, this named selection can be used any way we want. And of course, I can go and select uh, another bunch of uh, polygons. I can deselect this and create another one. So select set selection. I'm going to call this another one and press enter. So we have this one and we can recall it by double clicking. And we have this one. And again, I can double click. And you know that we can use these in different contexts. Let me show you how to do this within the nodal modeling workflow. I'm going to remove everything from here, remove these and just begin with a simple inset. And uh, I'm going to use the build. Why not? I can use uh, the index array from string if I want. It, it does exactly the same thing. If I want to do the 1, 3, 5, 7, I can do it here by just comma delimiting these numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7. This will produce exactly the same result. 1, 3, 5, 7. 1, 3, 5, 7. So it's up to me. I'm going to use the build. So let me delete this. So how do we save a selection? Well, we need the set selection set selection so the set selection needs to be part of the geometry stream because it's going to embed a selection inside this stream let me just get rid of that and uh, we need to put the indices the array out in here and i'm going to set a name called selection and it's polygons and everything is nice and dandy so from this point onwards I can go and use these named selections to do all sorts of things. Let me show you an example. Let's go and add an extrude. So I'm going to put the extrude here. And you can see it applies the extrude to everything. I need to go to this selection. And instead of putting an array, I need to put the name of the selection. And the name is selection. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to use a get selection. So get and go and find get selection. I'm going to drag it in here and I'm going to say it's a polygon. It outputs indices because that's what we need. I'm going to type here selection. So it needs to be the same name. And now this selection needs to read from the geometry stream. 
so it can find that set selection, that save selection, and now I can feed it in here. And you will see that the extrude is going to take place on the 1, 3, 5, and 7, or 1, 3, 5, and 7, or whatnot. And this selection persists. It doesn't matter how far you go in your modeling process. Uh, we can have a hundred different modeling operations from the setting to the getting, and it will still identify that. So for now, use it uh, with uh, caution. Just don't forget what you've set and what you're getting and all that. Now, this get selection can be used to define an active selection. So just like any other selection, I may choose to say active. So after I've done my first modeling operations, then I want to have a persistent selection. So let's put this in the geometry stream. Let's take this selection and put it in here. And now this is the active selection. And you can see I didn't have to feed it in here because now being active, that's the selection upon all the modeling tools are going to be applied. So now I can go and do another inset. So let's go and do an inset and grab it and put it here. And you will see that when I fix my numbers, only these polygons are going to be affected. So this is the, the overall methodology by which we use uh, selections, how we can create the active selection, how we can create um, incidental momentary selections, and how to uh, write and read selections from the geometry stream. Moving forward, I'm actually going to apply a combination of modeling operations and selections uh, to create a somewhat of a useful asset. And uh, I'm leaning towards some sort of procedural cityscape.